work holding on the lathe. And uh, before I get started, I am a diehard Yankee fan with a Red Sox hat on. I uh, have a cousin who lives in uh, Vermont and is a diehard Red Sox fan and is suffering from cancer. And our family is large, more than 200 people, so we are supporting his fight with the Red Sox hat, even though I am still and always will be a Yankee fan. Okay. Work holding on the lead. Before we really get into it, some important basics. Safety. There was a woman who was a very experienced demonstrator, a member of the AAW, who was demonstrating at some event, I can't remember who, what event or who uh, her name was, but the work came off the lathe, she was wearing a face mask, hit her in the head, and she did not survive that accident. So safety is job one here. Examine the workpiece. If it's at all suspect, don't use it. It's firewood. It's whatever you want to do with it except put it on the lathe. Okay, a lot of this stuff is basic, but I have to really start this way so that we remain, this club has been very fortunate. We have not had a single accident since the club was founded and I'd love to keep it that way and so would everybody else. Don't wear loose clothing or jewelry, okay? Um, wear appropriate eye dust and sound controls. It's, it's really simple, it's really basic, but sometimes we forget Start the lathe at the slowest speed, okay? Remember, I have a habit of every time I shut the lathe off, I just spin that speed control down. And when you start the lathe, the wood is here, or the piece is here, if it's acrylic, whatever. You start the lathe, it's gonna come off in a fan shape right here, usually. It's not going that way for sure, very little of it goes here. So when you start the lathe, don't stand in the path of uh, flying embers. One of the things that we have to consider is, is when we put a piece of, I'm gonna use wood, but it's acrylic, it's bone, it's antler, it's whatever you wanna turn. Choose a method to attach it to the lathe which supports the desired shape. And when I, and when I say that, if you're gonna use a, say you're gonna make a small spindle, you don't need a huge chuck on the tailstock end, and I've got some stuff to show you. Choose a method of holding the, the work that allows you to do what you wanna do. Turn what you wanna do, get the shape you want. Sometimes you gotta make a change in the middle of a project, and, and especially when Sal, talks about um, birdhouses, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, I'm about making a change. Choose a size of your tooling, of your work holding devices that allows close turning on an end. Now I have here, and I'll just, I'll show it on the, on the camera in a minute, but that's a step center. I think the maximum diameter of this step center is a quarter of an inch. This is a drive center. It comes out of a, a small shop in San Francisco. Um, and I forget the name of the shop or the name of the guy that did it, but this will allow you to get very close on the headstock end. And it's still a safety center. The surroundings, no distractions, obviously. If you can't turn the music, leave it off. Make sure you're awake and you're alert. And the most important, take your refreshments when the job is done, okay? Now, where am I here? No, not that yet. Um, I'm gonna shut this off. You can plug in the camera.
just give us a second. We'll start with the headstock end. Obviously, you have the chuck, okay? Everybody's got one. Everybody knows what it is. There's a bunch of considerations when you're using the chuck. My favorite set of jaws is a dovetail jaw. It, it allows you to cut a tenon where the, the inside is smaller than the out. The much better way to hold a compression thing. It doesn't have the ridges, which is the other kind. This will leave marks on your on your tenon. If you want, this one is is designed not to leave so much mark. And when you do that, the the chuck and the tenon will sit on the shoulder. Ray, you where are you, Ray? Okay, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do it here so we can sit. Sits on the shoulder and it doesn't touch the bottom of the chuck. So this has to be perpendicular and this is the shape of your jaw. We've got the serrated edge jaws. Not my favorite, they leave marks. We've got a, an external small um, piece jaws where this is a, an expansion joint. And then we got for small things, you want to do a finial, you want to do a pen blank. This is a compression joint. We have a mini chuck. I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. I've used it before. It's very difficult to get it really tight. You have to use the Tommy bars, and I've had um, less than great success on keeping it tight. You still there? All right. The chuck for bottle stoppers. Again, it, it's not my real favorite because every manufacturer of bottle stopper attachments is a different diameter. So if you go and, and base your wood turning on this diameter, it may not fit, it may be bigger or smaller than the piece that you're turning. So it's not my favorite. I usually will, will put a caliper on the, on the edge of the... Yeah, and, and then I'll, I'll turn it to that. Other types of chucks, that's an eccentric chuck. This is uh, Niles, the same people that do the bottle stoppers. Uh, it can be adjusted from the back. And each one of those holes is a different distance from the center. So if you plug this, this mandrel into the center, it's just a regular chuck and you can uh, attach your workpiece here, and depending on how far you are away from the center, you choose your, your screw. That's the measure of eccentricity. These are good for um, pendants or, or, or putting off-centered embellishments on a, on a flat piece like a, like a wooden pendant. It's kind of cool. We go from those to drive centers. A four-prong center, not my favorite. I like a stib center, which is this one. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, this one has the advantage of allowing you to back off the tailstock a little bit. It will stop the piece so you can examine your turning without having to shut the lathe off. 
it, it also prevents disastrous catches. It's a safety center or a STEB center, S-T-E-B. My all-time favorite, STEB center, and it comes in different diameters, okay? My all-time favorite is right there, quarter of an inch. You want to do small work and you want to get into uh, very close to the headstock, that's the one to choose, and that one happens to be stainless steel. Also, where are you, Ray? A regular ring drive with a point. It, uh, if you don't keep good pressure on it, it'll, it'll not drive it to rotate as, as well as something like a step center or a chuck. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Okay, I'm not. I'm not sure because if you get a catch, it's gonna it's gonna destroy that end of the end of the wood, and it's gonna take a hell of a catch to knock it off. Whereas the the step center, it'll stop it. Very easy, much easier than this four prong. prong. There's also a two prong, which is a little easier to adjust if the if the uh, the head end of the piece is just a little bit off of perpendicular. We got, let's continue with, with the headstock. The faceplate. Um, this one is, I forget whose, it doesn't matter. What I found is when you t take a piece to make, this is a, uh, um, a jig for, for the inside of a bowl. A jam chuck, yeah, thank you. Um, oh, here. Sometimes it's difficult to line up the center. All right, Ray. There, there is a one inch eight Chuck, I've got this cool little device that fits in there. And take a brad point drill. And now you got the center where you can make sure that this is in the center and screw it down. One more thing on the, on the headstock is the famous pen mandrel, okay? I, uh, I like the adjustable pen mandrel. Um, the longer this is, the more prone it is to bending. I also don't like the, the tail stock to go in this little detent here. We'll use one of these mandrel savers. It'll, it'll fit in so the only thing that gets tight is the actual bearings plus the, the uh, the piece you're working on. And it will not bend the, the mandrel shaft because there's, there's no pressure on the shaft, there's just pressure on the piece. Okay. Um, when you're doing a closed end pen, I'm still working on the headstock. This is a, a closed end pen mandrel. You can see it's got a flat here and a pin. And the way this thing works is if you, you, you'll slide this into your, your piece with the brass tube, and as soon as you turn it, this will lock up against the brass. It'll lock up against the brass, this little rolling uh, pin here, and it will provide positive drive if you want to do a closed end pin. A one inch eight nut, buy them by the pound at Fazio's. It's a whole lot cheaper than going to a catalog. Drill a hole, the major diameter of this, and epoxy it into a piece of plywood or whatever, and now you've got 
a, a sanding disc, a faceplate, face plate, whatever you want, and it's the price of a of a one inch eight. Yes. Really? Okay. You don't need to wash it, so it won't lock up. That one here, you'd be above it to go up. Because what you're doing is you're running it up all the way on the threads, not, on, not against the Yeah, I keep, I keep a fat washer on it. You can eliminate the washer. Okay. Just buy it, just cut it right out. But, but, but you, can, yeah, you can make your own sanding discs, you can make your own whatever you want with that. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm leading up to my my favorite piece of equipment. These are a, a stub center which screws into the middle of your. The, this one's for a barracuda, and and they make them. The talon comes with one, the stronghold comes with one, and then you have focus in on this one if you can, Ray. Then you have the screw center. Can you see the? Look at the threads on it, very thin. If I'm using hard maple and I don't want to put a piece on, I'll usually drill up the root hole a 1 64th of an inch bigger than the root. And then it, this thing screws in very easily. Uh, okay. Well, if, if you've got the room, and I'll, and I'll show you one here, it's, it's a very safe, positive way to hold, and, and it's, it's a 3 8 inch uh, screw with these special really sharp threads on it. And when I was doing my, my research for this, I, came, I wanted to do some research on my favorite screw chuck. This is a Jerry Glazer engineering screw chuck. He's been dead a long time, and I didn't think they were made anymore. But here's the beauty of this. One sixty-fourth inch bigger than the root diameter. Look at those beautiful threads. It, it took nothing to, to thread that in. The best part of this is it's three screw chucks in one. One size. Two sizes. Pardon? No, it's, it's a steel. And three sizes. So you can put the same piece on it depending on what you're going to... Uh... I found that they still make them. And I have the information on, on some later slides. But this, this is my all-time favorite. The threads are hardened. The thread alone costs 49 or $45 just to replace the thread. But I've had this thing for 15 years, and it looks brand new, and I've used it a ton of times. Just make sure you drill the right size pilot hole, and it should last forever. The root diameter. The root diameter is the the smooth part in between the threads. Okay. Okay. So you just want it of an inch larger than that, no screw right Yeah, yeah. That's good. I'm soft you probably can make it the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, we'll finish up with the, with the available stuff. Now we're going to the, the tailstock. Okay, live centers. A regular Jacob's chuck. I don't use it anymore. I like this one. Keyless. Now, 
My lathe happens to be a lathe that you cannot stick a rod through the tailstock. So, and sometimes if it'll get stuck and when you pack the, the quill all the way in, it's still stuck. So if you notice, I stuck a, a nylon bolt in the back just to give it a little bit extra length. So if I back that quill all the way to the back, it'll pop out. And I, you, there's a couple of them in here. This is, this is a far better one. It's easier to use and it doesn't apply, uh, doesn't need a chuck key. Um, sometimes you gotta hold it to keep the, the drill from, from moving, but that's just uh, going par for the course. You just do it. Okay, and then where'd it go? Oh, here. This is uh, the one way center removable pin two different sizes of uh, cups for for aligning the tailstock of your work and if you got something round a golf ball just drill a hole the size of your th screw threads and it's a non-marring way to put it on. You have the regular live center. I don't use it anymore. And two different sizes of safety centers or step centers. Still made. And finally, and I've got, I've got a piece of wood on here. There's one eighth inch thread on the other side of this. Where am I going? This way. So you can mount the chuck here. Okay, this piece happens to belong to Sal. And, and this is a, a work holding handmade piece for uh, pepper mill so he can yeah well this box is compliments to Sal and I'm not going into what he does to to hold birdhouses except for one thing that's the different different sizes of of the cutouts you need for this is a crush grind because it's got the little uh, thing in here but It's, it's just safety, okay? You can use a cone center. Um, it, it leaves a smaller, if, if you use this, and it's a relatively soft wood, this thing, the hole's gonna get bigger and bigger. Uh, so this one prevents really the hole from getting bigger and bigger. And I like this one because of its size. I wish I had this. This one in the, in the small size like this one, but I don't, so I use that. Um, sometimes when you're, you're drilling um, centers to hold a piece of wood, you, these things tend to, ro to wander according to grain, especially when you're drilling a, a pen blank, for example. So I have, and I use them all the time, a center finder drill. This thing does a great job of, of bypassing the tendency of the hole to wander um, when you're starting it. Okay. Put it in, advance this with, all right. Most lathes will wobble just the hair, okay? 
so what I do is I'll, I'll line up the, the piece of wood in the headstock and I'll bring it up to the crosshairs where I can just fit it in. And when I do that, and I'll hit this with an awl, okay? When I do that, then I can just, just tap a, a V-shaped hole in it. And this one will actually not wander for, through the various grain. This one puts a true hole in it. And once you get this thing lined up, lock your tailstock, because it, it wobbles. So you get it lined up, boom, you're done. I use, especially, I have a whole bunch of sizes. This one's a little bit big for a pen blank, but I use it all the time for a pen blank. <sighs> yes? Because the spur point bit is not round. If you look, it's faceted. And it, it will, if it's not perfectly round, and this one is, it may tend to follow the grain. Not much, but I'm anal, so I want it right where I want it. And, and that works better. Okay, now, one more, one more piece of um, mounting for the headstock is make your own, okay? This is a one inch eight. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. That. And I bitched about that, so I better follow the rules. Okay, mount this, find the center, and then put this in the tailstock. Rotate this by hand, and it'll go in pretty much all the way. What I do when I'm done with that is drop a little thin CA in there. Uh, to keep the threads, especially because I'm going to use this as either a jam chuck or some sort of holding um, piece that I'm going to make. So this one will screw right on to a particular one eighth, one inch eight uh, spindle thread. Another thing you can make your own. Number two, Morse taper. Um, well, we'll turn it into a chuck or, or something. Now, I, I left a, a big fat end on it. If I want to do a cup, I can cut that into a cup. I can make it any size I want. Um, and it exactly fits a number two Morse taper. I measured... Start, finish, length, and then I took a, um, a steel rule and I made sure it was flat from one end to the other. This one's maple, so I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet. It was made for this, but if I want to put something on here, I can use this as a uh, uh, attachment for a small glue block. I can do whatever I want, make a cup in it, make a point in it hold small things. I want to do an egg. I can cut it. You can use it for a press if you leave it in there. Sure. Okay. Um, this one. It's a stepped handmade holder. Um, the shoulder, three-eighths by uh, three quarter by three quarter, five eighths by three quarter. So I'll take a couple of Forstner bits, draw, and drill three quarter five eighths, or I'm sorry, yeah, three quarter five eighths in the bottom, and then a three quarter, um, I'm sorry, a five eighths in the bottom, three quarters here, and that'll plug into here goes in the chuck, and now I can turn a birdhouse. But that's all I'm going to say about turning birdhouses, because that's Sal's demonstration. But this comes in handy, because if you do a lot of them, you're going to find out one size 
that you really like. This one happens to be three quarters on the, the top end and five eighths on the bottom. It'll be true and you can, turn, you can turn it any way you want. And there's a little space in here so that you don't have to direct the shoulder. And what I did, because they're a pain in the ass to measure with a caliper, this hole is 5 eighths. And that hole is three quarters. So I'll just, when I'm making those, this, I'll just use that until it fits right. Whoa, sorry. This is something from, from, uh, where were we last week? Lancaster, yeah. Can you see these? They're, if you're going to do a lid or a finial and you want to hold that finial in your headstock, okay? This one's tapered. This is for a dovetail. This one is not. These are, this is five eighths. This is three quarters. No, that's half. This is three quarters. You put it in your, your chuck and when you tighten down on the jaws, the little kerf squeezes and it will hold your very small lid or finial or whatever. Did you do those this week? I did. Here's the here's how I made it. I took a piece of three inch by three inch maple square. I ran ran the a kerf on the table saw the whole length of it, and I guess it was this big. Um, not to the center, and then I just cut discs and made these. Now, as soon as you put them in the, in the chuck, uh, you can squeeze down on it, and you, you can custom make the hole. You push that through your table saw around? No, no, I, I, I turned it after. I put it in square, turned the table saw on. Sure. Yeah, and then I stuck the square, I stuck the square on, and the reason I didn't cut it all the way to the center you got to hold it. You got to hold it on the lathe when you turn it from square to round. But these things are pretty cool. And uh, what else? <laughs> okay. This hole, the center hole. Yeah, the center hole. Yeah, I used the forcing a bit when it was mounted in the in the chuck. Slice first. Okay, you held it in the truck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and I find you know, I never thought much about using homemade stuff until Pete decided to show us how to do a long worth chuck. But but this stuff is incredibly easy to make. It will solve a problem if you want to turn a very small finial, a, a tiny lid, and you can make this size any, you can, you can make it this big if you want. The, these are for lids for birdhouses. Is the hole that you put a hole in like that, the squeezing part, is it, that hole stays in the exact center and doesn't move at all as it gets closed? You, I mean, you size this, so it's, it's really close to fitting, and you don't have to close the jaws very much, so it stays pretty well around. Okay, okay, because I was thinking of, you're, you're taking the groove you cut in and closing it up completely, but you're not. Oh, it doesn't, oh no, no, just very, very little. Okay. The Longworth Chuck. Right. Where'd you get that? I made it, with Pete's help. Very simple. Okay, it's, it's, it's expansion and it's compression. Use it all the time. They have tapered, well, Pete, Pete did a pretty good, pardon? I still have enough room to make another four kids. If you want one, can I say see Pete? You got it. I think, I think it's a great, um, a great tool, I really do. 
And here, we got what they're calling jumbo jaws or cold jaws, okay? This one is expansion. And in the expansion mode, don't put too much pressure on you. I will blow the bowl out. And now you can finish the bottom. Very simple. No, 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 not too fast. Um, Yeah, it's yeah. Th this one has got more, more capability. You can open it up to. This is the maximum my lathe will fit. Is, I guess it's 11 and a half inches. My I have a 12 inch lathe, and this one will allow me to do an inside or an outside. It's same as this. Only, I didn't know they had these things. And they're, and they're what 200 bucks if you buy them finished. Yeah. This was a whole lot cheaper. So I had this until Pete showed us how to make that. The last thing, oh, for the pen makers. Yeah. I don't like a pen press. I hate the pen press because you can't keep the things lined up. I haven't used a pen press in years. These are actually short Morse two tapers. Put one in the headstock, one in the tailstock, and you can use very accurate pressing by just turning this. Where'd you get those? Uh, Penn State, I think. No, Craft Supply. Um, I won't use a pen press anymore. I'll, and you can just, and you can back off on it, you can adjust it, you can do whatever you want. One of them is cupped and one of them has got a little hole in it. I think they're great. Okay. Pardon? Yeah, but I never use it because there's a hole in here. If you want to put the the um, the nib end of of a, a pen, put it in this little hole. I haven't used that, and this one is cupped. Hold on a second. Yeah. No pinhole in that, but the pin will go in here if you need it. Comes with a little alignment pin. Okay, last thing I want to show you, and, and, and this is compliments of Sal. He, he is going to do some decorations on a, on a sphere, okay? So he made this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he made that to hold the sphere. Okay, so he can decorate this. Just loosen the screws, turn it any way you want. Um, it's got a one inch eight handmade uh, thread chased in it. So, what else did he do? Oh, and I'll just show you. This is, these are all, these are all screw. Um, oh well. These are, are what he's made to hold the various diameters of, um, pardon? Oh yeah, okay. But these are, these are for his pepper mills and each one of these is sized according to one of those. And, and it's, it's a very good system for holding those when you wanna finish the design shape of the outside or, or put finish on them. And, and all of this is compliments of Sal. I stopped by and seen him. He will do the demonstration on ornaments next, next month. The last thing is a, a steady rest. If you're gonna do something 
long and thin and you want and it's you want to work on the end and you don't want it to wobble you've all there's a who is it alan batty does an 18 inch goblet his lathe is bigger than this obviously with a 1 8 inch stem little base which is about that long from bottom to the where the stem begins and a little cup which is about that big and about that long from the end of the stem and obviously it's going to fly all over the place if you don't have something to to um, steady the outside or the the tailstock end of this this one happens to be penn state uh, I, I show it to you i don't like it because it's hard to adjust where you get all three wheels exerting the same pressure and it's and it's very difficult to find each of those wheels equidistant from the center of the axis of turning um, so there are alternatives and i think we got to plug in the and I'm almost done, almost done, almost done. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see if we can do this. Only a couple more slides. Bear with me for just a second. Okay. There's a homemade steady rest. Is that in focus? Okay. What it has in it is items readily available from a hardware store from Rockler, from anybody else. And those are um, inline skate wheels. Okay, the, the um, beauty of this is that you can make this and do the measurements so that where they meet is exactly in the center of the axis of rotation. I'm working on plans for that. I'll have them available hopefully next month. Okay, now, I'm thinking of my, pardon? Is that yours? No, no. This was an example, uh, I'm gonna make plans similar to this. Uh, mine's gonna be a little different, but you can, you can hold it to the lathe bed, you can adjust it for your own ways, okay? I don't know what lathe it is, doesn't matter, but you can see on the bottom of the picture, it's it's toggled into the lathe bed. You just tighten it that way. Um, you can adjust those three arms indiv independently so you can get them to close exactly on the axis of rotation. I like to make little stuff. So I'm gonna make a, a, a second set of those arms. And I'm gonna use three quarter inch wheels so I can get it real close. Oh. Oops. Oops. Home Depot. These are the little wheels you put on sliding doors in your pantry or whatever. And I, and I, can, I can modify those arms to take these things and I can, I can steady a very small diameter um, piece of work. Okay. Here's, here's a cool thing that I saw, I guess it was in Louisville. Uh, Jimmy Clues was demonstrating holding very thin object. It's a string steady. It's, it's a real simple um, thing to make, but it's, in a very, it's a very effective steady. Um, the only caveat is don't use any polyester, nylon, or any string but cotton or to leave burn marks. 
Oh, unless you want burn marks, but... Um, and finally, that's how it's used. Okay, and you notice there's a very thin shaft coming out of the back of that. Simple make, just use cotton string. This is a glazer screw chuck. Okay. If anybody wants it, it's 169 bucks a piece, and it comes in one inch eight and inch and a quarter eight. And a replacement screw is about 45 bucks. And it comes from Glazer High Tech, which is, he sold that company, or, or Jerry Glazer, when he, was, when he died, the company passed on to about four or five different people, including Stuart Batty, but now it's, it's made by Glazer High Tech out of California. Costs about $169. I didn't pay half of that because it was brand new when I bought it, but I wouldn't be without it. It's, it's a great adjustable screw chuck. Any questions? Um, if there's a means to put this on the website? You mean just this slide or, or this information? Well, some of the other information. Yeah, yeah. All right, I guess we can put the presentation on there. This is a PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint will work on um, MacBooks or PCs, doesn't matter. You can also just email everybody. We're saving all of the PDFs. So okay. This will be up on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? We'll see that it gets published. Okay. You have a regular wood chuck? A chuck? Yeah, it's, it's sitting with the, the, uh, the jumbo jaws on it. I think this answers the age-old question. How much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck? Oh! Yeah. All right. All right. All right, I got, I got one more. I got one more thing to do. I have one more thing to do here, Ray. We'll, we'll just do the camera now. No, you're not done. One more thing. You guys got to appreciate this. This is so cool. This. There it is. Let's see. Yeah, way. Look at that. Who made it? Who made that? Gary. Gary did. You want to you want to do thirty seconds on how you did it? So we, you have now, I think we have 56 members, you no, got to... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next item is, is Bev is, is going to um, do the challenge, and the challenge is birdhouses. So here's a couple that she made. This is a piece of birch with the bark still on it, okay? Here's... The, uh, no, you can, you can buy the birds. Here's a, 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 a sea urchin with another hand carved bird. <laughs> okay, now, I, I'm not sure if you can see it, we're, and we're almost done. These are some of the, uh, the shapes and ideas for turning birdhouses. Well, you can hang these on a tree or a bush or an ornament, yeah. 
yeah. These happen to be what she brought with us, her. And, and the final thing this is the result of Ron mentoring Samantha, who is a brand new Turner. The rose was not turned. All right, so, the, the, so Bev's challenge is for the December show and tell, and it will be ornaments. A holiday ornaments. And by the way, you can hang them on a tree. So, and, and these, this is an ideal way, and I'm not going to cut into cells, but that was made specifically for doing um, birdhouses. You can do the same thing for ornaments because the hole in the, I'll use this one, the hole in the bottom could be different from the hole in the top. And if you wanted to turn top and bottom, you have a means to hold this safely and securely on your lathe with one of these homemade, and just plug it in. All right, any other questions? Uh, thanks for your patience. <laughs>